Hey, what's up guys, Alexi here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to another episode about Vala. In this tutorial, we're gonna continue the work that we started in the previous lesson and we're gonna implement a primary button to the left side of our header bar and then a menu button with an icon to the right side. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable, and affordable VPS in the cloud, SkySilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. So first of all, let's create a button directly inside our Jarvis header bar class that we created in the previous lesson. And if you don't know the syntax to create a button, it's really, really simple. Let's simply access the Valadoc documentation and search for gtk.button. And then we're gonna go here, click it. We can go right in the example section where we have some a super sweet predefined code that we can simply copy paste and use in our own application. So let's copy this section. Actually, let's copy just this row and let's paste it inside our code editor. So here, instead of add button, we can have paste it here. Uh, we don't wanna type hint the variable. We wanna just have a simple variable declare for the button. It's just a style. You can do whatever you want. If you want to type in it directly inside the variable, you can do it. But instead of calling this simply button, let's give it a more eloquent name, like call it add button or something like that. And here we can use the GTK button class to initialize a button with a label. So we can directly specify a label and not have another row to specify the label. And the label inside here, we can simply write add. If you want to set up your application to allow translations in the future, we're going to see that in a features lesson in uh, upcoming tutorials. But for now, just if you want, we're going to go back and update all the things. But for now, just if you want, just wrap your text, whatever text you're writing around parentheses and before the parentheses just put an underscore in this way this text will be translatable and we're gonna see in future videos how to automatically generate all the translation files with Mason. but I don't want to overwhelm you too much so for now let's just keep it really really simple with a simple add label and save it now we have this button that we need to attach it in our header bar we need to slap it here at the beginning at the start of our header bar to do that we can simply use a built-in method of the gtk header bar to attach a gtk widget at the beginning at the start of the header bar and this method is simply called pack underscore start and then inside the parentheses we can specify the widget that we want to put at the start of our header bar so in our case the add button if we save it, we open our terminal inside the build folder, we type ninja. And when we trigger our Jarvis application, now we have the button here, but you can see that it's kind of weird. It doesn't really look good, right? First of all, the button spans for the entire height of the header bar. We really don't want to do that. We really don't want to have this effect. And second, the button doesn't have the primary styling here that we want to use the default primary style that pretty much the same look and feel that all the primary buttons have based on our GTK theme. You can probably achieve that by writing your own custom CSS since GTK can handle CSS, but we're not going to do that now because we will use the default themes and the default classes of our own GTK theme. So in my case, I'm using elementary OS, I can achieve these exact result by attaching the same type of style that elementary us uses it so simply let's close this application let's go back in our code editor in the add button now we want to attach a style and we can say add button so we're going to reference the button that we just created we can get into the style context so we're going to basically access all the classes and that section of the GTK button that allows us to add, remove or modify CSS classes. And then we're going to concatenate another method called simply add class. And inside the add class, we need to specify the name of the class. So I need to type suggested dash action, semicolon and save it. If we open our terminal, we type ninja again, and then we trigger our application. Look at that. Automatically, our button inherited the suggested action CSS class that we have inside our elementary installation. 
Now we need to solve the fact that these items spans for the entire height of the container. And this is kind of like a default behavior of a GTK widget. Automatically a GTK widget goes 100% of the height and inherits the styling of its parent. So we need to specify to this widget, hey, don't extend, but align yourself to the middle. And this is really easy because we have the ability in GTK to edit and modify the alignment on a specific widget. So we can say add underscore button and we can say V align that stands for vertical alignment because we don't want to edit both vertical and horizontal alignment and here we need to tell it to not span for the entire height do not expand do not extend yourself but just be aligned in the middle how to find the proper declaration for these attribute that's simple let's once again access the Valadoc documentation and in this case we need to access the gtk widget and search for align and go to the vialign attribute and the vialign attribute accepts an align type of gtk declaration so if we click on align here that specific attribute accepts the gtk dot align and then whatever other values here is specified and we have these five values the baseline center end and fill what we want is center. So if we click on this, we basically have to copy what it's written in the URL, gtk.align.center, all uppercase. If we copy this and we paste it in our code editor here and we save it, once again, we ninja our build and then we trigger it. Look at that. Now the button doesn't span anymore, doesn't go the full height, 100% of the header bar, but it's centered aligned. So you can see here, we're starting to step into the realm of UI editing, UI element with CSS and some like custom attributes and custom declarations of our widget. And at the beginning, it's kind of really hard every time to update something in your terminal, trigger the ninja build and then see how it looks in your application. And you start wishing that it was a way easier method or way easier approach to actually inspect the element like you're doing on a browser to inspect the source code, to inspect the CSS and dynamically change that CSS to understand how it affects your UI or the UI of your application. Well, GTK does that, GTK allows that when you're dealing with applications that you trigger from the terminal. So if we access or if we do just a simple Google search or a DuckDuckGo search, whatever you want to use, GTK inspector, if we access the first result that is the default GNOME wiki page, here we have a preview of a super cool GTK inspector that we can trigger in our application. And here, in order to do that, you can simply uh, paste these, copy paste these in your terminal to update your G settings that we know what are in order to set the debug enable inspector key binding to true. So after you copy paste this inside your terminal, you can simply once again open the terminal and trigger your application and then hit on your keyboard control shift I. By doing this control shift I, we're gonna open the GTK inspector. This is exactly the same as having the browser inspector where you can inspect the HTML source code of a specific page and change the CSS. So now, for example, if we wanna edit a little bit and see how we can edit more this button, we can click this little select object icon, go on the button, select it, and automatically we are inside the GTK label. If we click on this little icon here, we'll show the file three view, basically all the widgets, hierarchy of the widgets with parent and child, and we can manually select what we want with a way easier approach. So now we want to select the GTK button that as you can see has a suggested action CSS class. So if we double click on this, now we have the GTK button selected. If we access the properties of the button, we can scroll down and check the vertical alignment property, the GTK align center, the same exact attribute we specified in our code. If we double click on this, this little drop down pop up menu will appear and we can dynamically change its value. And you can see in real time how things are changing. So if we want to attach it to the fill or to the start, to the end or the center, leave it like that. 
One other thing that you can do, other than a million different things, so just play with these and check all the things that you can edit dynamically or a GTK application, we can access the CSS and write and update dynamically all the CSS live for our application. So this button has a suggested action type of class. So we can simply say suggested dash action. I want the background to be red F zero zero. There you go. You can see in real time how things are changing. Uh, these inspector, it's kind of really limited from a CSS point of view. You don't have all the cool things that you have in the browser, like the color selection or the dynamic update, color picker, all this kind of stuff. And it doesn't retain your changes. If you close these inspector and you close the application, you trigger the application once again, nothing is there. So you have to rewrite everything from scratch. But it's a great little tool that will help you to properly analyze and see how your uh, UI behaves based on some changes. So for example, in the visuals, you can change also the theme, check the default Advaita or use the high contrast or go back to the default, enable the dark variation, see how your UI handles the dark variation and so on, change the settings and blah, blah, blah. Be careful when you access the GPU related acceleration things because your application could crash. But this is a little handy widget that is really useful when you're doing some UI. So let's close this, let's trigger again. Now we have our little application with the add button that doesn't do anything. The other thing before concluding this lesson, I wanna create another button, but this in this case, I want to have the button with an image. So let's see how to do it. Let's close this. Let's open once again our code editor. And now we need to add a button with the icon. So let's create a new variable called var menu underscore button. And here we can write new GTK button. And we could do a couple of things. We could initialize the class empty or we could use another subclass. And let's see if it actually exists because here we use GTK button with label. That could be maybe a GTK button with image, most likely. So let's access once again our documentation. Let's go all the way back to the GTK button. And we have here the creation methods with label, with mnemonic from icon name, look at that. From icon name accepts two parameters, accept the icon name that has to be most likely a string, but can accept also null if we want to pass a null. And then the icon size that it's another default GTK value. So let's type from icon name, from underscore icon name, and the icon name has to be a default icon of our theme or default icon of our GTK theme. And that could be another confusing thing. Like how do we find which icon is properly named? How do we find the name of this little icon that I wanna use here? Well, there's a little handy app that Daniel Foray created for Elementor US called Lookbook. So if we type Lookbook, and we open it. This is a little handy app that allows us to search for an icon and it gives us a little snippet of how to use that specific icon. And the name of the icon is gonna be simply open menu. The second parameter is the size, the icon size of this icon that by default it's button because if we access our valid doc documentation and we check the from icon name creation method that we're using, the second parameter is this icon size, by default is button. If we click on the icon size, this is pretty much identical to the alignment thing that we did before. Here we have the gtk.icon size attribute and we have these values available, the button, dialog, D and D and blah, blah, blah. What we wanna use is the large toolbar because that's what we're using for our header bar that has a 24 pixel size of comparison. So we can click on large toolbar and if you want, you can copy once again the URL or the actual title of this page and paste it here as a second parameter. So GTK icon size large toolbar. Now we need to attach this menu button inside our header bar. And if to attach it at the beginning, we use pack start. To attach it at the end of the header bar, we should probably use pack underscore end. And here we can paste the menu button, semicolon. Save it, 
let's open our terminal ninja again and then trigger the application perfect we have our button here and we have our menu button with our beautiful open menu icon you can see here we have the same problem that we were having with the button so the entire area the entire height of the header bar it's clickable you can see these like ghost rollover effect it's kind of stretched it's not a circle it doesn't really look good in order to fix this we need to do exactly the same as we did it's an alignment problem so let's copy this declaration here let's paste it right here and let's replace the add button with menu button so also in this case we're gonna update the vertical alignment to be centered in our header bar once again we trigger the ninja build and then we trigger our application we click now we have a perfect circle the rest of the header bar is not clickable fantastic so why don't you before the next lesson play with the gtk inspector which is a really great little tool open it check all the properties the signals the css selectors everything that you can edit and have fun with it and of course be aware that it could crash if you edit too many things because that's how it is unfortunately but it's always good to get comfortable with this because it's a really great tool that will help you to properly see how things behave in your ui while you're styling while you're generating a complex ui and we're going to use it throughout this series a lot well that's pretty much it for this video i hope you enjoyed if you did please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and until the next lesson as usual happy coding